overlooked by the natural wonder that is Mount Vesuvius. With the seaside Roman ruins of Pompeii on its doorstep, it's no surprise that Naples is a thriving tourist destination, with over 3 million visitors every year. I was raised in the bustling city of Naples, and whenever I return, my love for it floods back. As one of the oldest inhabited cities in the world, 12th century castles compete with pristine piazzas for your attention. Today, as Italy's third largest city and with over a million Neapolitans calling it home, it really is a special place. For me, Naples is the ultimate masterpiece, a perfect symphony of art, culture, architecture, energy, passion, and of course, food. And every Neapolitan starts their day with this and one of these. The pastry shop Scaturchio has been serving Neapolitans breakfast in the heart of the city for over 100 years. The most famous of its breakfast pastries is the sfogliatelle. With a sweet feeling, in my opinion, is the best way to start your day. So I'm thrilled head baker Giacomo has invited me to the kitchen for his masterclass in this Naples staple. We started right here with the puff pastry. So my job is to massage the pastry with lard. So nice and light for breakfast. Yeah, flour and lard. C'è bella leggera, leggera. Ma basta mangiare una sola, fatta bene. But Giacomo, Giacomo said it's better to have only one, but have a good one. The lard separates out the pastry into crispy wafer thin layers when it bakes. For a Neapolitan point of view, to make sfogliatella is like for a, a Yorkshire man making Yorkshire pudding for the first time. A rite of passage. E ora inizia a rotolare. A rotolare su se stesso, sì, piano piano. So sì. now we have to piano roll piano. it into a very tight sausage. Esatto. Perfetto. Molto preciso. He said I'm very uh, precise. And what I love about this is that like all great Italian dishes, it has a fascinating history. So the uh, sfogliatella was born somewhere around the 1600. And the priests and the monks, they were the first to create around this coastline, the sfogliatella, because at the time, they were the only people who had enough money to buy sugar, lard, and flour. Lo tiri, lo giri. Perfetto. E adesso tagliamo. Next, we cut discs about a finger width. Then, we mold into cone shapes, ready for a filling of ricotta cheese, semolina, sugar, egg, and candied fruits. Once stuffed and sealed, they are ready for baking. Che praticamente doveva sembrare un qualche cosa che appartenesse alla donna. So the story says that to make the perfect sfogliatella, the shape should be something that resembles something that is in the middle area of a woman. Cioè il dolce, bellissimo. And that's why Neapolitan they always smile when they have sfogliatella, and <laughs> I'm smile as well. Once cooked and dusted with icing sugar, our sfogliatelle are ready. And my mouth is watering. Look at that. There she is in all its glory. La sfogliatella napoletana. 100,000 of sfogliatelle napoletane sold every single day for Neapolitan people to have breakfast. It's crunchy outside flaky, and inside is moist. I can really taste the fresh ricotta cheese with the sweetness of the candied peel. This is exactly the way I remembered. Herds of water buffalo roam this area, and it's only the milk from Peston Buffalo that makes this world-class buffalo mozzarella. I'm meeting local cheese producer Pasquale, who says they owe a big debt to these majestic animals. 
This is incredible. Pasquale was explaining that these buffaloes, they've been here for pretty much about 100 years. I mean, in the old days, pestomy used to be like a big swarm. Originally working animals, the water buffalo were used to help drain the pestum swamps, creating rich farmland. But now they live a more comfortable life. This beautiful buffalo here, she's called Anna Maria, and they definitely don't mind to get massaged. If you see Pasquale now, what we do, she loves it. I would. Pasquale believes that pampering these animals, limiting stress and feeding them well, ensures the quality of the milk and the mozzarella they produce is the best in Italy. Ah, so the reason why it's called mozzarella because it comes from uh, uh, an Italian way to say mozzare, si. right? Mozzare. Mozzare means when you take your finger, you squeeze this soft cheese and it becomes a bowl. And from mozzare then came the name mozzarella. With the massage complete, it's morning milking time. Okay, andiamo, va. Andiamo, let's go, let's go. But every other woman I know, she doesn't listen. Standing here, I can smell the sweetness of the milk. Buona, soltanto con la bufala. So, uh, the buffalo milk is much, much better than normal cow milk because it's got more aroma. The milk is then taken into the creamery and heated, and then curdled using enzymes to separate into curds and whey. The curd is placed in boiling water, where it melts into the malleable mixture that we know as mozzarella. And they still use the traditional mozzare technique to finish making the cheese. Perciò noi dobbiamo fare la mozzarella tutti i giorni. Ah, ma if they make mozzarella every day, and Pasquale said, well, if the buffalo does milk every day, then we have to do the mozzarella every day. Mozzarella is big business for Pasquale. They sell nearly 51 million bowls of it every year. See, for us, mozzarella is a way of living. It's the same uh, way that every morning you go and get your cup of tea or cup of coffee. We will go and get our fresh buffalo mozzarella. And the biggest tip that I can give you is to make sure that you always eat it at room temperature. So all the fat starts to melt and it's going to be delicious.